ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Friday, August 5th, your drive beginning now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I am your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in. We've got, coming up this hour, some comments from Kobe Cumberlander. And I'm excited about what Kobe had to say. So we're going to get to that. We're going to open up the phone line for you. It is 877-420-TALK. That's 877-420-8255. We also have the text line. It is wide open for you now. You can do that anytime. 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. Today is the final day for me until the following week. I am off next week. Christian Palmer is going to be stepping in, and I'm looking forward to a week full of Christian a lot of baseball. I tell you that right now. He's going to talk baseball. He loves baseball. He loves the Pirates. So you've got some of that. And then I'll be back after, and I'll be recharged, ready to go, as we've got football to talk about. Uh, I am going to drop by Coach uh, Huff's uh, availability tomorrow. I'm going to check out what's happening as uh, camp getting underway for the Thundering Herd. So just kind of want to see where the herd's at beginning this process, which will be different from – where the herd hopes to be by the end of this process. So uh, we'll have that for you on Monday. So I'm just going to check out what's going on and see how Coach is feeling on a Saturday after getting things started. I might ask him a little bit about Willie Johnson. Uh, You guys watch game yesterday? Hall of Fame game? Now, normally I don't get into exhibition games as much. I mean, I did – Get to, I used to do this before the, they decided in the uh, the conference rooms of the NFL that we're going to charge a stupid price for the service. I used to pay like a few bucks, and I got all the preseason games, and I'd have to watch it on the NFL service, and that was fine. It was kind of clunky, but all right, because locally, apparently, we're not Bengals fans here on our local television stations. Uh, we're all Steelers fans. We're not Bengals fans. So not a single one of us uh, get to see those preseason games. Luckily for you, we've got them for you right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. But I do digress. So I was, because I couldn't watch the games locally, I would watch the games on the NFL Rewind service or whatever their product was. And then they started charging a stupid price for it and bundling it in with the service. Uh, you know, I can go catch replays. Wasn't feeling that. So those were the games I'd watch. So when I get a game like this, okay, it's a Hall of Fame game. I'm going to tune in and want to watch that. And there was another reason why I wanted to watch. Obviously, we all wanted to see what Willie Johnson would do. And you know what? Willie Johnson has done what he needed to do. He's done it. He has got people talking about him. Big splash. What'd he do? Even though it didn't count, it's a preseason game anyway, so don't don't let that worry you too much took the punt on the last play in the third quarter and he returned it 88 yards 80 yards for touchdown against the Raiders and then they call it back because of the penalty that's okay the team didn't care they celebrated and uh, had a good time with him and the Raiders won 27-11 do we care no because it really doesn't count and this isn't the team this isn't the team you're rolling with when it counts But if you're Willie Johnson, people have your name in their mouths today. They're talking about you. And it's on social media. We got to see the the return. He showed he can flash. He showed what he's got. And that's good for him. Hopefully, we get to see another opportunity like that. And maybe, just maybe, he gets to stick around a lot longer. But we, we knew he could do that. So when we saw that, I was like, yeah, Willie, look at Willie go. And then, oh, you're calling it back. How many of you were just absolutely disappointed? I mean, it's a preseason game, but 
he did that. He flashed. He, he made it happen, and then they call it back because of penalty. And I'm sure the complete collective of herd fans watching that were like screaming at the television, screaming because it didn't count. But keep in mind, it's a preseason game. That's okay. We were all watching it anyway. I we watched. I stuck with it. I watched almost the entire broadcast. 27-11, usually I wouldn't even consider this game. I wouldn't watch the Jaguars and the Raiders. That's not a game I'm I'm just going to dial up. I'm not a Raiders fan, not necessarily. Don't really have a care towards the Jaguars, but, you know, Willie was playing, so, okay, I want to see what's going on here. And, oh, it's football, by the way. We didn't have that for a while. So now we start ramping up here. We'll have more preseason games, and, again, let me remind you, we've got Bengals preseason football right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930 and on 93.3 and 1340. Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. Can you tell I'm, I'm excited? I'm excited for I mean, preseason Bengals football. I'm excited. I'm not going to lie to you. It's football. I'm excited for it. I'm happy because that was a great run. How many of you today in the audience are with me because you're Bengals fans and I'm, I'm your people? It's a lot of you, I know. So we get that again. Get that run hopefully again. And, you know, maybe Joe, Joe Burrow's back in time. I'm not worried about it. It's a tough man. just feels like there's always something. Yeah, there's there's always something there. I'm just I'm getting a little concerned here. I, w- I want to make sure he's healthy because he could truly be one of the great quarterbacks of all time. I mean, you gotta you gotta win a Super Bowl to get into the, the conversation. Then you gotta win multiple Super Bowls to get into the higher levels of quarterback greatness. No one's gonna win the level of Super Bowls in my lifetime again. I don't think anyway that Tom Brady has done. I don't think we're going to see Tom Brady numbers or greatness for a long time. I mean, you could have quarterbacks technically greater than Tom Brady, but I don't think we're going to see that level of Super Bowl again, at least in my lifetime. Same thing with the NBA. I mean, you got so many good guys here, but you're not going to have just like an all encompassing dominant guy like Jordan. I mean, you could have guys who can win multiple championships, but. You're not going to have Jordan win three, take off a couple of seasons, come back, and and win three more. You're not going to have that. If he'd have stayed, you could have had eight. You could have had eight championships if he had stayed. I, I don't think there would have been anyone that could have stopped him then. But he wanted to go after baseball and, hey, follow your dreams. The legend... The legend would have just gotten more interesting if he would have actually stuck. And I think he would have stuck if he would have stayed with it. I think he would have been a a tremendous baseball player. I know that's maybe not the opinion of some, but if you watched his progress, I think he would have been a really good baseball player. But at the end of the day, man, you're the king of the court, man. Go, go Go win basketball games. You're the king of the court. And he came back. So I don't think we're going to see that level of player again anytime soon in football, not Tom Brady level. But I think Joe can be really, really special. I just want to keep him healthy, keep him protected, and keep him healthy. All right, let's talk herd football when we continue. I've got comments from Kobe Cumberlander. We've got some yesterday some comments uh, we didn't get a chance to get to from uh, Henry uh, Columbia. Marshall's potential starting quarterback. I only say potential starting quarterback because you know Coach Huff made it clear that the the decision hasn't been made yet. So if Coach is saying it's not being made yet, then I'm going to honor what Coach has to say. So we'll hear from Kobe when we continue. Don't forget, we want to hear from you as well. Text line is 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. That's the number to be a part of the program. 
More on its way, including Kobe Cumberlander, when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 in AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We continue on this Friday edition, August 5th. Paul Swan, your host for The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. You want to hear from Kobe Cumberlander? I do. Kobe's one of my favorite players on the roster. I mean, we all have our favorites. Over the years, we've had a lot of guys that have been just show favorites. And right now, occupying the number one spot has got to be, for me, Kobe Cumberlander. That's not to say I don't have a lot of players I like, but when it comes to, I just want to talk to him, bring him to the media room, or bring him to uh, any media availability. Uh, It's usually Kobe Cumberlander uh, that's uh, the guy that I look forward to seeing, you know, Hopefully we get some uh, other guys who can step up and be that next Kobe Cumberlander. But he's a guy who's been here. We've enjoyed him. We've six years. We've enjoyed him for so long now. It's going to be weird to not have him on the roster after it's all said and done, unless we can get him some more eligibility. I mean, here's a guy who's who's cherished his time. A lot of players just want to be done early. Get out of here. Get to the next level. Get to where they need to be. For Kobe, he's cherished it, and he's enjoyed his time, and he's seen a lot. So he's somebody that we can talk to about, okay, what was it like You know, when you started? You started with Doc, and then you, you migrated into Coach Huff, and so you've been with Coach Huff now here for a little while, and you've seen the changes. So you know what Marshall was like before. You know what Marshall is like now. So he can really touch on that a lot better than some players because he's seen it for a long time. And he talked about that with us yesterday about some of those changes that he's seen over his time at Marshall. Jeez, where do I, where do I start, man? It's It's been a wild journey, but it's been fun. It's been very, very fun, um, you know, from the past coaches and even the coaches now. Um, you know, I appreciate everything they've done, not just for me, but for the whole community and the, just the whole staff in general, everybody. You know, these are amazing coaches. They do everything they do to make us not just better people off the field, but people on the field as well. And, you know, being here, what, like, I never would have imagined being in in Huntington ever in my life. You know, I had plans of playing in Michigan, uh, going to Michigan State, Um, but I'm glad I chose the right choice of coming here because the people here are amazing, uh, very, very supportive, and just the culture as the football program, like, there's so much history that people don't even talk about. Amazing history, amazing alumni, amazing All-Americans that came through here. That's why... I'm glad I chose this place. He stayed a long time because he loved it here. He's had fun. And now he's going through the process of this is going to be the last time for everything. I want to know if he was thinking about it. And if he wasn't thinking about it, he will start thinking about it now because that's what I asked him. Hey, when's it hit you? This is going to be the last time you do this. This is going to be the last time you do that. And, he said he was thinking about it. He, it's been on his mind, and he I think he's been excited for everything. He's just going to cherish it, but Kobe talked to us a little bit about, you know, just starting to know it's the last time for everything. I, I have. I've been thinking about it like crazy for the past, what, last two weeks, and I was talking to Eli Neal and uh, Jacorian last night. Like, I just can't believe it's my last one. You know, I've been here for a long time. I've seen the good and the bad, but – you know, being here this year, you can see everybody's a lot closer. It's not as clickish. You know, the team, I feel, I feel so comfortable with this team because I know, like, oh, like, these guys, like, really buying to the program. Like, there's no selfish guys on this team. It's all about being together as a whole. So, he, honestly, I think he's going to enjoy it. You know, there's always that uh, melancholy feeling. You know, when you when you look back and like, okay, yeah, this is this is it. But I think he's going to enjoy it a lot more. And you, you heard that from him here, with just the way that everyone feels toward each other now, and that's good to hear from him. He's been here a long time. Hear that he's pretty happy with the way it's. You mean the culture 
all you you got to improve the culture. Once you improve the culture or change the culture to where, you know, everybody everybody's in, things get better. Now I was kind of curious for him because Kobe's a, a pretty exciting guy to watch out there, but who excites him? Who's he want to see? Who he's looking forward to being out there on the field with? And he gave us uh, his thoughts. He's um, he's really excited for this particular player. I want to say Owen Porter. For sure. Uh, talk about a guy that is just a West Virginia native, just hard nose, get after it type guy. I love the energy. I, like, I feed off of that. You know, me being an older guy and him being a younger guy, it's like those are the type of people you want to feed off of. You don't want to feed off the negative stuff. You want to feed off nothing but positive energy. And then, you know, you look at OP and it's like, yeah, this is the type of guy I want to feed off of and play every game with, for sure. So a guy that is full of energy wants to feed off Owen Porter. That's a guy he wants to, to play with and feed off. At the same time, I'm sure there are a lot of players on this team that want to play with him, learn from him, feed off his energy. And so he was asked about his experience being one of the veterans, one of the OPs, one of the guys that have been around. And he talked to us about how he's going to use that experience to really help the team. Um, I think just being here for a while, it's it's been important. You know, you're, you're coming into a, into a program, especially those new guys like the freshmen, even those transfers. It's like, you know, what to expect is you know, you're, you're coming into a program like it's it's work. That's it. It's all about the work. And if you're not here about the work, then you just you don't love ball. And here at Marshall, that's always what it's always been. It's always been about the work you're getting after. You're trying to win games. You're trying to win conference championships. You're trying to win those big bowl games. And with them coming in, I'm telling them, like, yo, this is what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to do it this way. You got to do what, how it's supposed to be done, like what coach wants us to do. You know, coach, ble- like, puts in our heads, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. I know it gets repetitive over time, but when you really dial in and listen to that, it's like that message really matters because you can spread it to the other guys, and that's when they follow in. So the repetitive nature of trust the process, it, it works. Closing the gap, trusting the process. You know, it's that repetitive nature that hammers it in, and then they start believing it and understanding it and then starting to trust the process is what I I took away from that. Let's talk a little bit about the season itself. First of all, you're going into a new league, the Sun Belt Conference. And I think the schedule is good. I know we're going to argue a little bit and debate a little bit about Gardner-Webb and Norfolk State. I get it. We'll have those conversations. I get it. But on top of that, you have Notre Dame. You have Bowling Green. Balances out for me. And then you have, I think, a very attractive conference schedule. There's not a single conference game on this slate that I am not excited for. Not excited for. Troy, I'm here for it. Louisiana, here for it. James Madison, going to be a tremendous game. Coastal Carolina, definitely. Old Dominion, one of your running mates in Conference USA. I think you got a good thing going with Old Dominion. App State's going to be a banger. Georgia Southern, that's going to be great for me because here we go again. This was this was the team. This is this is the team. When Marshall was in, then one double A, this was the standard. Georgia Southern. Not North Dakota State University. It was Georgia Southern. That was the standard in which all other Division I AA programs tried to strive for. They want to come back and be Georgia Southern again. The way Marshall wants to be Marshall again. I'm here for it. And Georgia State, watch out. This is going to be a good program. This is going to be a competitive program. Don't sleep on Georgia State. So I'm excited about it. Kobe is excited about being in the Sun Belt as well. Oh, my gosh. Worst can't even imagine. Now, I'm, I'm very, very excited. New conference, new competition. And I know we ran to a couple of those teams last year like App State, Louisiana, uh, run into Old Dominion again. But, you know, 
the new competition that you run into, it's like, how could you not love that? You know, it's, it's a chance to prove yourself, to show who's really the best, how much work you put in throughout the spring, no, winter, throughout the spring, even the summer, and even camp, you know, you, you can't hide. You can't hide from that. You know, you, we'll go out and you really show who, who the big dog is. That's how I look at it. That's how I always think of that mentality right there. Talking about the big dog, right? Now, I asked him a couple questions later when we were talking to him. Just talk to me about, you know, what are you seeing over there? Have you spied over a little bit? Have you kind of looked and seen, you know, what these guys were about, what these teams were about? Just kind of get an eye for what you got coming in front of you here. You know, what do you know or you, what what do you understand about the new competition? You see where I'm going with this here? I was just wanting to know from him, you know, you got to focus on camp. You got to focus on what's in front of you. But you look at that schedule, you want to know what you're going to be dealing with. So as a veteran, as a guy who likes to be prepared, you know, what do you know? And it really turned into his response. The excitement's there, but just the fact that he wants more competition. I mean, you can hear it in his voice, and he'll he'll tell it to you as well. He wants to go out there and play the very best he can play. And I think the Sun Belt's a lot better than Conference USA. We're not trying to really disparage the teams that Marshall used to face because there were good teams and there was good competition. This is better. Kobe knows it, and he wants it. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, you know, Conference USA, that's – that's a thing of the past. Um, it was cool to be in that conference, but you know, for guys like me, the OPs, uh, just, we we just want you know better competition. Like we feel like we're we're deserving of that. You know what I'm saying? Like every day we come and put the work. Like people don't even know we've been grinding our butts off all summer long, all summer long. Just blood, sweat, and tears. Nobody knows what we go through behind the scenes. No one does, and it's just. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just excited, man. Like, this is so much I can say, but you just like, I'm so excited to play these teams, and you know, I just want to have a chance to, not just for me to prove myself, but I want my whole team and the coaches to prove ourselves too, because of how much we worked. So, there was a question asked about focus. I think you can hear it in his voice. He's ready to go. He's focused, and now this is his last season. Not to say he was not focused before, but whatever you were, it seems to amplify when you know it's the last go. Like here it is. This is the last time I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to do it the best I can because it's the last time I get This is my last shot, so I'm going to make the last shot the best, right? You know where I'm going with this? You see, see what Sam's saying? If this was my last show ever, I want it to be the very best. I want to go out being able to do it the very best I possibly can, the last go. Here it is. I'll never get a chance to do this again, so I want this to be the best note I can end on. And how do I do that? Well, I gotta be I gotta prepare even more. I've gotta be ready even more. I've gotta focus. Even more, because I don't get another chance. And so, Kobe knows that. This is the last go-around. And so, with that said, he talks about how even more so now that he's there, he's ready to go. Oh, absolutely. And I've, I've been, I want to say, the most focused I've ever been. You know, it was like, this is your last time, you know, what are you, you going to bring to the table? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to go in and work harder than the next guy because it's your last time. You never know when you'll ever give it back. You never know when you'll get it back. You know, like, God forbid I get hurt. You know, I just, just you got to cherish every moment and just go hard every day. Every day, you got to cherish it. So, you got to go out there. I think the best attitude is this might be the last time I ever do this. So, I got to do it the very best I can. 
And then if the opportunity comes again, I got to go out there and do it the very best I can because it might not be happening anymore. And then repeat. That's not a bad way to live. It's like, okay, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to do this the very best I can. It might not end up being the very best I, you know, I possibly can do, but I'm going to give it my best. And then I'm going to do it again tomorrow. And he's feeling that. He's seeing that a little bit more because this might be the last time ever. There might not be a pro career for him. This might be the last time he is on a football field this season playing the game. So he's a guy that I'm excited about channeling all that energy. And speaking of that energy, and this will be our final comment from Kobe. Coach said, I don't think we got to that cut yet talking about some of the the players. But Coach talked about Kobe and kind of said he was like on Mars. He doesn't know if he's on Mars or not just because he's he's up there, he's out there, he's, he's so energetic. And so Kobe was asked about that. Just the energy, how he channels that energy, because he's talking to us. Yesterday, he's talking to us. I'm not going to lie to you. We're we're a good group of guys, but it's me, it's it's Woody Woodrum, it's Bill Cornwell, it's my guy C.J. Harvey, it's Keith Morehouse. I mean, we're there, Luke Creasy. I mean, we're a fun group of people, but I don't know if if we're the first group of guys that, you know, you wake up and go, hey, I got to go talk to Swan and and Creasy and Cornwell and CJ and Keith. I got to go talk. I mean, maybe he does. Maybe he's excited to talk to us. I don't know. But he was excited just to be up there talking to us, and he talked about his energy not necessarily directed at us, but he was excited nonetheless. I want to say, like, I've always as a kid, I've just been, I've just always wanted to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you got guys, a whole bunch of guys that are, like, you know, trying to have fun, like, why not, you know, make it even brighter? You know what I'm saying? And and it's like, it gets guys up. You know, when somebody's having a bad day, I just want to be that type of guy to, like, you know, bring some type of joy, you know what I'm saying, to make somebody happy. And, you know, when it's on the field, you got to bring the juice. I want everybody to be pumped up every single game. You can't go in, you know, scared and nervous. You got to go in with the best energy possible because, you know, when you have the utmost confidence, you play your best. So he's a master channeling that energy. And again, he was excited to come in there and talk to us about the season. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong, we're a pretty fun group of guys. We're pretty fun. But I mean, you should be, you know what? Take that back. He should be excited to talk to us. We were excited to talk to him. He should be excited to talk to us. All right. We um we've got a little bit more for you. I've got just a few comments from Marshall quarterback Henry Columbia. Could be your starting quarterback. He's ready to go, he said. And he knows there's going to be a competition for the job. We'll hear those comments. And I want yours. Text line is open for you. 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. That's my text line. You can be a part of the program today. This is The Drive. Paul Swan, your host, here on ESPN 94.1. And AM 930. Here's what's happening on the Kindred Communications family of stations. Hey, everybody, it's Cecilia with 97.9 The River. And this Saturday, August the 6th, it's Light Up the Lake. Celebrate, honor, remember, and support what means the most to you this Saturday at Barbersville Lake, starting at 6 o'clock. You can find out how you can purchase your lantern in advance at lightupthelakewv.com. Don't miss Light Up the Lake 2022 this Saturday with 97.9. Nine, the river. It's Eric from 927 and 985 The Planet. You get Lex and Terry seven mornings a week between 6 and 10 a.m. Listen online for free as well. All you have to do is go to planet927.com. Hi, this is Paul Swan. Join me for The Drive weekdays from 5 to 6 on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'll catch you up on all the latest martial sports news and more during your drive home on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Keep listening to our Kindred Communications 
nation's family of stations. This is home. Is house hunting becoming overwhelming? In this out-of-the-ordinary market, you need an out-of-the-ordinary lender. Hi, I'm Josh Childers, NMLS 1223457. I'm a loan originator with Prime Lending in Huntington. With our array of loan products and renovation options, we can help you turn a house into a home. Don't know where to start? Look us up today at primelendinghuntington.com. All loans subject to credit approval. Rates and fees subject to change. Prime Lending, a Plains Capital Company. NMLS 13649 is an equal housing lender. We've invented a new messaging system using the crisp sounds of Bud Light. Crisp code, lesson 86. This is how you say, G Willikers, it's a hot one. Let's cool down with some Bud Lights. And that's it for today. Bud Light. Crisp. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Our Kindred Communications family of stations reminds you of the need for blood donations to the Red Cross. Blood is always needed. It may save your life or the life of a loved one. This reminder is brought to you in part by Ohio Valley Bank, investing back in the local community they serve. Community First, member FDIC. Osborne Equipment Service in Jackson, Ohio, your diesel specialist since 1979. Pollux Jewelers, 913 Winchester Avenue in Ashland. Phone 606-924-3197. Vacation is over, and Jim's Steak and Spaghetti House is rested, refreshed, and ready to serve you. Jim's has been providing great quality service and great food for more than 80 years and isn't planning on changing anytime soon. Stop by and visit Jim's for their one-of-a-kind spaghetti. Enjoy their legendary haddock fish. And don't forget Jim's famous homemade pies. Dine in, carry out, or get sauce to go. Jim's Steak and Spaghetti, 925th Avenue, downtown Huntington. And they now take debit and credit cards. Open Tuesday through Saturday. There are no words to describe it. The isolation. The boredom. The loneliness. If you're wondering where your teenage son or daughter's spirit went, you're hardly alone. The past year has been devastating, especially for them. But here's the good news. They might just find it again, playing high school sports. Workouts that stimulate, teammates and coaches that care, the sense of belonging so many of us have been missing lately. That's what school sports are all about. The sense of achievement is real, and the camaraderie is hard to beat. Coping with uncertainty is difficult, but school sports can help the teenagers in your family start feeling like themselves again. Encourage them to give it a try. High school sports. It's so much more than a game. This message presented by the West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission and the West Virginia Athletic Directors Association. Hey, is that a faucet running? Nope, that's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. It is? Yeah, forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. The water comes straight from the forest to us. In fact... What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum! That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. How do trees clean the air? They soak up the dirty air on their leaves, branches, and trunks, which means clean air for us. Hmm. Cool. I didn't know that. Yep. But the forest does more than give us clean air and water. It gives us shade for hot days, birds to listen to, and trees to climb. Wow. That's awesome. I didn't know how cool the forest could be. Hey, let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. We're taking Paul Swan everywhere. Download or subscribe to The Drive with Paul Swan on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for being a part of today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. My name is Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you being here every single day for us. Uh, Next week, I've got Christian Palmer stepping in for me. He's going to uh, do a fantastic job. I appreciate uh, everyone sticking around and helping him out. And don't forget, you can always text him as well. The text line will be open next week for you as we get closer to the start of football season. And the text line is now open here. You, you, can, you can text me at 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. But you know what? If that's not your thing, you can find me on Twitter, at Paul Swan. 
Now, I'm going to see that over the weekend. I'm going to see that all next week. So if you want to just reach out to me on Twitter, you like social media a little bit better than texting, I'll be there for you as well. And, of course, I do mean this. Of course, we're going to be on Twitter a lot for the start of football, the post-game show, all of that's coming. Yeah, we we got all that starting to come back up soon. Uh, I think we're going to be back on Thunder Street. I'm looking forward to that. We'll be on the stage, and we will be, once again, kicking off your game day right there in, in the heart of all the action. And then after it's all said and done, we're going to be back here uh, taking your phone calls and text as we uh, recap the game. And uh, hopefully it's going to be a fun season. Everybody's going to have a great season because Marshall's going to go undefeated. That's what I want, undefeated season. It makes my job a lot easier. I come in here on the post game and I just tell you what happened. We all go home happy. That's what I'm looking for. We all go home happy. It'll be a quick post game because nobody's mad. That's what I want. Quick post game because nobody's mad. I come in. I tell you how it is. You text me how excited you are. You call me. You tell me how excited you are. And then we rinse and repeat, right? Yeah, I can't get everything I want. It's going to be a challenging schedule. There's going to be some tough games on the schedule. You know, There might be some heartbreaking losses. There might be some exciting victories. We don't know until we get underway on September 3rd against Norfolk State, and we're going to be right there with you from start to finish here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Now, who's going to be the quarterback? Will it be Cam? Will Cam be the quarterback? Or is it going to be transfer Henry Columbia? Got a chance to talk to him yesterday, and he talked a little bit with us about just being ready to go. Finally get to go. You know, I'm excited. I've been, I feel like I've been here for a while. Uh, you know, I was here obviously in spring, not being able to participate. I was joking with uh, my girlfriend last night that uh, I haven't practiced, officially practiced since November, December. So I'm excited to finally get back going and um, get out there and practice. So he's ready to go. He's excited. And as you heard him mention, he's been a part of the community now. He's been a part of Marshall for several months. And I, I asked him about his journey. Just just for those maybe don't know enough about him or know how he came to Marshall. So just to talk about that journey a little bit. So originally when I was at Utah State and um, Coach Matt Wells left to Texas Tech, I had uh, went in the transfer portal, obviously. And um, although I thought that I was going to go to Texas Tech, um, Marshall had originally reached out to me, um, and it was a place that I was deciding between. It was actually between Marshall and Texas Tech. And um, so this time around, when I went back in the transfer portal, I thought that connection again for them to reach back out to me, I thought that it was kind of God telling me that um, this is where I need to be. Relationships matter, right? Relationships matter. And building a relationship doesn't mean you get that player right away, but with the transfer portal, I mean, the reality is here now. You know, there are going to be players that will go in that transfer portal every year and if you have a good relationship and whatever reason it didn't work out at the previous school and you've got a good relationship, you might be able to attract that player. I mean, that's something that Coach Huff has talked about. I mean, he he is trying to get the best a talent, the best personnel to come to Marshall. That's a primary job of his, to get the very best he can attract to Marshall University. So competition that's going to be key we want competition in that quarterback room we don't want just one dominant guy and we've got some backups this is not the nfl where we've got that once in a generation quarterback and heaven forbid he go down we've got the backup that can cover you can't have that in the nfl because one guy will want to leave you can though or you could, and maybe you still can. In college, you can have guys battling it out. You can have guys that are pushing each other. You want your backups. You you want depth in the quarterback room. You want that overall guy, number one guy. You want him. But you want him. You want him looking over his shoulder a little bit, right? Okay, I, I better I better not take a, a day off here because the guy behind me. He might not take a day off either. So you want some competition to make you better. And Columbia understands that, and he talked about that, because he's not just going to roll in here. Here I am. I have arrived. I'm your quarterback. 
He knows he's got to go in there, battle, and he's got to earn that. Unfortunately, I don't have that cut. So trust me, it was a good cut. It was a really good cut. All right. We will take our final break, come back, and wrap it up. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. It's our final segment of today's edition of The Drive. Don't forget, next week, Christian Palmer filling in. You might hear from me a little bit. I'm heading over to uh, media availability tomorrow, catch up with Coach Huff. See how things are going. So you might hear you might hear from me, maybe, on next week's show. I'll tell you this, though. Uh, I'm excited. Football season is back. We got a great game yesterday. We got to see Willie Johnson run it back 88 yards, and then they call it back because of a penalty. But we got to see him run 88 yards for a touchdown, so that's big for him. That's big for him. All right, last break. If you weren't with us, you just popped in for the final segment. Uh, we were talking about Marshall quarterback Henry Columbia, and um, I had a cut ready to go about him talking about the upcoming competition in the quarterback room, and it didn't play. Well, I fixed that in the break. Here is Henry. I wanted to get to this cut. Here he is talking about the competition with those quarterbacks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's competition everywhere, and competition makes every quarterback, I mean, every position greater. It's Each quarterback in this room has something different that they bring to the table, and just being able to learn from each other, um, bounce ideas off each other in film and out there on practice, it's going to be really important for all of us. You know, we have a really young group, um, a bunch of freshmen, some sophomore, and then me. So I'm just looking to kind of be the older guy that I used to look up to, um, kind of teach some guys some things that I learned along the way. I've been behind a couple great quarterbacks. So being able to teach those guys, I think that'll be important for me and for them. There you have it. Saying all the right things. It's preseason. As Coach said yesterday, you know, everything's great. Everybody's undefeated. Uh, There are no bad fans. There are no bad anything. We're all having a good time. It's great. I mean, the radio host is undefeated right now, too. Right? I haven't made any bad plays. I haven't done anything yet. Well, give, give me time. It'll happen. We'll find out. So what's happening tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we'll kind of get a feel for what this team is um, undergoing, getting ready, and then we'll have that for you next week. And you know, things are different for us as well. I mean, it's year two. We don't get to go hang out at practice every day. And that's kind of – that's actually not bad. I'm – I'm of the mindset that if I'm a coach, I want to do all of this without distraction, if possible. I don't need I don't need guys like like me hanging out, asking questions. I mean, coach is going to tell me what, uh, and that's fine. I'm good with that. It's it's not like it's not like I'm going to glean anything truly from camp. Hey, that player looked good. Great. You know, is that going to translate to game day? I mean, that stuff's good. I like that. It's 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 fascinating. It is. I mean, it's it's different in the NFL, and the NFL is a different animal altogether. But you know, I'm good with these once a week. And, and I know it might be frustrating a little. If you're a fan, it, it might be a little frustrating because you don't get to hang out at the stadium and just kind of watch practice. And no, this is a good thing though. As frustrating as that might be for a few people, it it's really I think. It's you got to run this thing anymore. I mean, you got to run this thing almost like it's professional football, just about just the way it's it's evolved. And I would try to eliminate as many distractions as possible because you know, for the diehards like us, we want all the information we possibly can get. And for the casual fan, they want to show up on game day and then they want to know why the team didn't win. They want to be happy the team won, or they want to be mad that the team lost. Why didn't team win? That's when, yeah, that's when they're interested. The team won. Hey, we're all happy. We're going down to, I don't know. We're going to Roosters or something after the game. We're going to celebrate, right? That's a, that's what you get out of that. So we might have a little lockdown on info right now, but at the same time, I mean, it's kind of a balancing act. How do we generate excitement at the same time? Not telegraph everything we're doing. And so we can come into this and maybe, just maybe, have 
focus, no distractions, and maybe not telegraph a few things we're going to do. We all know that there's going to be a quarterback competition. We all know that Marshall's going to be really good at the running back position. I mean, there's some things that are known, but I like it. I like the – to a degree. I like the lockdown to a degree just because – you want to be able to put it all together and not have to really worry about the outside distractions. Same thing with injury reports. And, and I get it. You know, the NFL is completely different. But you know, I would not, if I was uh, able to, I wouldn't telegraph a thing. It would be frustrating for, for people who are trying to cover a team, but it, I wouldn't tell you anything. If I was a coach – Hey, what's the what's the medical situation? Um, no comment. All right, that's me being empathetic. I'm out. Don't forget, next week Christian Palmer is going to be in. Uh, find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. And if um, by the way, if you're on Facebook right now, uh, if you're part, I'm going to share it a couple other places. But uh, you know, Facebook has those uh, donations you, know, you do for your birthday. Mine's coming up tomorrow. So I just went ahead and decided, hey, if anybody wants to do a donation for the Big Green, I'm going to set up a donation for my birthday. So uh, I posted it on uh, one of the Marshall Facebook groups, the big one, and I'll post it on uh, our group, The Drive with Paul Swan. I'll post it on a couple places as well so you can see it. Uh, Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll be back on Monday with Christian Palmer. I'll see you in a week. You can find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.